Okay, everybody can hear? Awesome. So, again, what I was saying is I just wanted to be able to grow our reach and our influence to be able to um, meet teachers uh, where they're at with, with their STEM needs and help to make sure that they are getting the types of resources that they need in their classrooms where they can do quick and easy activities or labs or demonstrations in any area of STEM. Um, for their classrooms and everything is completely free of charge to the teachers. You're never ever required to pay anything for any of the trainings or the activities that we do um, and we try to make sure that we have plenty of resources that we can meet our teachers uh, with. Whether it's at your school, in your classroom, district level, whatever level you need help with, I can work with you um, to help um, give you resources that might be beneficial for your school or for your situation. So this past year, um, we finally back into an in-person format, um, but that's never really worked well for Northwest Tennessee. So I'm located at Dyersburg State, and if we have projects or, or, or um, programs that are on ground, it's really hard during the school year to get a teacher to drive an hour, hour and a half on a weekday, especially, or on a Friday, or even on your Saturday when you're, when you're wanting to just spend time with your family. It's really hard to get that reach and that involvement with our teachers um, in our region, just because we're so spread out. We're not, you know, all really, really close together. But what we have been doing is we have been, um, since the beginning of the year, offering virtual STEM camps. So every fourth month, or every fourth Thursday of the month, and this is open to any K-12 teacher um, in our region, completely free of charge. So on every Thursday, every fourth Thursday of the month, we offer a virtual STEM camp. It lasts an hour. And there are five activities um, that are demonstrated during that period of time. Um, and during this presentation of these activities, I will show you how they work. We can talk about how they can be modified for different grade levels or different ability levels. Um, and then uh, we just share um, any kinds of ideas that other teachers have about how it could be modified for different grade levels because this is open to all K-12 teachers. So some things could be made um, much more in-depth for our high school kids, for our physical science, chemistry, biology, math, whatever. Um, and then you can also make them as simple as you need to for your younger kids to get them involved in learning more about STEM and getting excited about it. Um, so these are held every Thursday um, from 3.30 to 4.30. So I've gotten lots and lots of good feedback on that. I have lots of teachers that have started to join these. Um, they just log on for an hour. We look at these um, demonstrations and these activities that could be done. We talk about how they can be modified for different grade levels. And um, then uh, anyone who signs up and attends the workshop does get a continuing education uh, credit or professional development hours. So you will be mailed a certificate and everyone who attends also gets a STEM gift. So we will mail a STEM gift to you um, from the Dyersburg State Community College uh, STEM Hub. Those, I have a few in here who have been to those and, and I'm, I'm two gifts behind just because I lost my STEM workers. Um, one thing that I had is um, I had some great STEM workers and they were sisters and uh, we had some trouble with transportation so I've not been able to get them to be able to work in the afternoons and so I am busting my tail to get it all packed up and out in the mail for all of you all to enjoy your, your STEM gifts. So again, those are always offered at no cost. Um, our next one will actually be on August the 25th. So we're not going to have any um, virtual STEM programs in the summer. Um, I'm going to finish up a dissertation. So I need to take a couple, take, take a couple months off and then recover. Um, however, we also have some other cool things that I want to talk about. Um, previously, prior to COVID, we would have at least one innovative STEM workshop on ground in person per year, and I've been able to pair up with some really great um, other organizations to offer those, and I'm going to show you some pictures and talk about what they are here in just a few minutes. And we are also able to offer a school program free of charge called Starry Nights. 
And I want to talk to you a little bit about that as well. And again, if you see there on the bottom, it says everything that we offer through our STEM hub is completely no charge to all of you all. So um, we'll come back to this. I, I want to talk about this here in just a minute. We'll come back to this um, about a, an upcoming conference that the STEM Innovation Hub is hosting along with Lakewood Elementary. And if you're interested, we'll, we'll talk about that. So don't let me forget, Leanne, don't let me forget. All right, so these are some of the past workshops and trainings that we've offered for teachers um, in person, and this was prior to COVID, and I'd really like to get back out there hands-on with teachers doing some really cool things. These are generally offered either in April, May, or June on um, a Saturday, um, as my schedule allows. But this workshop here was offered in um, collaboration with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service at Real Foot. So Real Foot Lake, um, there's a state park there, but there's also a fish and wildlife refuge there. And so I've been able to pair up with one of the rangers there to offer some quality workshops for our teachers. And one was on aquatic macroinvertebrates. And so if you look here at the pictures, what I think is really cool, you see here some of the people that are looking at um, here is a microscope, you see a, a tub of water. So this was collected using dip nets, deframe dip nets in water sources around the refuge and we brought those back to the classroom. And then what we did is we identified them using uh, dichotomous keys. And so the, the goal was to at least identify it down to order not necessarily species, but down to order. And then what we could do is you could use the numbers of those um, organisms and the different types of orders that you see in those organisms to infer water quality. Um, and this is something that I also do with my biology 1120 students. We take them out once a semester, they go up there, they learn how to do that, and then we go canoeing. We actually had planned to go canoeing on this trip as well, so that's always part of the package is you get a two and a half hour canoe, uh, guided canoe trip as just fun afterwards. But on this uh, particular day, that wasn't possible. I don't know if you can tell real well here, but you see these people are in coats and hoods and there's snow on the ground. This was offered the first weekend of April a few years ago and it snowed like buckets and I thought no one's gonna come but there was about 10 people who were crazy enough like me to get out there in the snow with their waders on with deframe dip, net, dip nets and play in the water and uh, collect invertebrates and it was actually really really fun so you could even do this with really small kids um, and you could use just a creek if you have a creek that's running near your school um, or a little bank or just a little area of uh, maybe a little pond you could actually take your kids out and teach them how to use a little dip net and um, show them that there's all kinds of aquatic macro invertebrates in the water a lot of our insects start out as aquatic macroinvertebrates, um, like this little fella right here. This is one of our little dragonfly larvae that you can find in the water. And a lot of those actually live longer in the water than they do as an adult on land. There's lots of cool things that you could do to modify that for your students. And so this was a great um, collaboration with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. We still have that collaboration going. I've been able to get my students back up there and I'd love to get some teachers back up there to do some cool things as well. Um, this was offered at no cost, and this was a workshop that went from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So pretty cool, fun stuff. Some other things that we've done. Now this is with the Tennessee State Parks. So this was in collaboration with David Haggard and the Real Foot uh, State Park. Um, out at the lake and a few summers ago we went out there this was in June and uh, you see the individuals here in the middle those were the participants that day and they came out and they learned all about the importance of bats and why bats are so important in our ecosystems as you could talk a lot of things about bats they're the only flying mammal 25% um, of all mammals are made up of bats um, they're super important um, on an agricultural level disease level um, food supply level because bats take care of our insects and so we learned all about bats and then we built bat houses and they were able to take those bat houses back to their homes 
Um, one person won a really large bat house that they could put up at their school along with a pole so that they could um, encourage bats to start roosting at their school and have more of an outreach program there. I would love to do this one again. It was a lot of fun. And after this workshop, so this was about a three-hour workshop, and then afterwards we spent about two hours on the lake on a pontoon boat learning about the history of the lake um, with David Haggard. And, of course, this was offered at no charge to our teachers as well. So that's one of our fun little activities. And then we have something called our Starry Nights program. And this is in close collaboration with the Dis uh, Discovery Park of America that's out at Union City. Have any of you all traveled out there or been to there? Lots of cool resources. They have lots of programs for, for students and for teachers. And I have been lucky enough um, for about the past four years to work with their education specialist, Russell Orr. Um, with our astronomy trailer. Now, this is, these are pictures taken in the dark, so it might be a little difficult to see. But here in this picture, you see the side of a trailer. This is a very specially built trailer that holds this very large microscope, or not microscope, telescope in it. And it is built specially for this telescope. It's completely mounted in the trailer. And so the very top of this comes all the way back so that you can use the telescope wherever it's parked. And we have done this um, at several events for Starry Nights programs for schools. And so Russell is the telescope extraordinaire. I am not. I'm a biologist. I am not. I'm not an astronomist at all. But he is the extraordinaire. So what we do is we pair up. No, maybe? I don't know. So what we do is we pair up, and we will take the telescope and the trailer out to your school. And what we do is we, we usually focus on a, a very easy object that's always visible on a good night, and that's the moon, um, most of the weeks of the month. And so we will look at the lunar calendar, help schedule that with you, have a couple of rain dates in mind in case, because this is all weather dependent. And what we do is we show... Um, everybody what the moon looks like um, through the telescope. Now, at this event, we had it set up to where um, on the table in front of the trailer, we had a um, computer with a live feed to the computer from the telescope so that everyone who was in attendance could see that. We have since learned how to um, stream it live on our um, Facebook channel or our Facebook page. So we've learned how to stream it live. And what we are in the works with right now, I've, I've sent in a, a budget request and I got a yes, which is cool. The worst they can say is no. I get told no a lot. But what we're doing is we're adding a large screen that can be mounted on the side of this trailer. And it's going to be a split screen. So on one side of the screen, you can see everything that Russell sees through the telescope. And on the other side of the screen, you can see Russell doing his magic with the telescope. Um, so we also did this just not long ago at Lakewood Elementary in Paris, Tennessee. Miss Leanne is here with us today. She's in the red top. And she's the one who contacted me and said, hey, can you bring it out? And I was like, sure. Sure. Absolutely. So we did. We got there before dark. So what we did prior to it getting dark enough to use the telescope is Russell had some flyers with QR codes on them that you could scan and use your cell phone to take a virtual tour of the moon, of different parts of the moon, of different craters of the moon. And so he would have the students use their smartphones, take, you know, and, and take this tour with him as he talked about it, which was really cool. And then once it became dark enough, he did his magic with the telescope, showed everyone the moon. I love this picture right here. So you see this little, little child um, looking, and Russell's just talking. He's very, very passionate. And here we have it streamed to a computer on the table. But we had a lot of people who were out in the audience who just had their phones and ha had tuned into our Facebook page and was able to listen to what he was talking about further away from the trailer, which was also pretty cool. So that's things that we can offer to your school um, for any kind of event that you have in the evenings. So if you're working on a school improvement plan and you need some sort of parent involvement, um, if you want to have a STEM night or anything like that, 
We can arrange it. We don't care where to go. It's no charge to you. It's all uh, funded through our grant that runs the Northwest Tennessee STEM Hub program. And uh, the, the biggest problem with this is it's weather dependent, of course. But even if it were a bad night where it was too cloudy to see something, we could bring in the, uh, just bring in the telescope and show everyone how it works and what it looks like and show some past videos or some past footage of things that we've done and do the um, interactive virtual um, tours with your, cell, uh, with your smartphones as well, which is really a lot of fun. So this was a good project that engaged parents and children because this was at an, an elementary school. So parents could scan that with their child. They could see that it was a safe site that they were going to. This site is on nasa.gov. And this was a great little activity um, or STEM night that we were able to um, take part of at a school. And we love to come out to schools. We also will come out to libraries. We're working with the um, McIvers Grant Library in Dyersburg to offer a STEM night for their summer reading program. Um, and so that's in the works right now, and that's going to be probably in July. And so when I get that um, date settled, if you wanted to come out and see what it's all about, then you could come out and check it out and see if it's something that you might like to see in your school. So I'm going to go back for just a second to this to this slide. So um, this is um, a first, and I'm so happy to be able to collaborate with Leanne at Lakewood Elementary in Paris. She said, Shauna, I want to have a conference where we can have teachers get together and share best, pra best practices in STEM and, and learn from each other and collaborate with each other and have some activities for them to do. And I said, okay, let's do it. And it's planned and we're ready. So these are the two dates that we have coming up that you might be interested in. Um, on May 25th, we're holding a STEM or STEAM conference um, at Lakewood Elementary for grades K through four. And then on the 31st, we're offering one for grades four through eight. Each of these dates has a um, maximum amount of participants. So we're, we're capping that off at 20 per day. And uh, if you're interested in signing up for that, you can just scan that QR code right there, and it'll take you to a little sign-up page for the conference. Um, all materials for the entire day for all the activities and the things that we plan to do will be provided for you. We will have door prizes. We will have um, a catered lunch. We will have lots of snacks. So, um, and it's completely free. Each day, 8 to 3, is that right, Leanne? Yes. 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. each day, and you do get um, professional development hours through the continuing uh, uh, workforce development at our college. So continuing education, you'll get a certificate for that as well. So there's a little QR code there if you would like to scan it and take part in that. I would love for you guys to come out and see what cool things we have planned for you guys that day. Are there any questions on that? How many of you guys teach STEM right now? Or are, how many, I, and, and I know that, um, Leanne, I know you guys are working uh, towards STEM designation. Yeah. So um, that's something that we can also help with. Um, Last year, I had some extra grant money at the end of the year, and when I found out that a school was in need of uh, getting new equipment for their school to start STEM, I had the money to be able to get them started for that. So we were able to donate quite a few um, supplies for that teacher in that classroom um, and get them started, and that was awesome. Yes, ma'am? Uh-huh. Okay. Mm hmm Six high school STEM. Six K-12. Okay. 
we could definitely, if you went to the four to eighth grade, um, we could definitely, um, and if I knew you were coming, I could prepare ahead of time to talk to you about how the things that we're doing in the in the class could be geared towards uh, nine through 12. Absolutely. Um, a lot of things that any grade does, you can either make it much more um, in-depth for your older kids or much less in-depth for your younger kids. So there are always ways that you can modify. So if that's something that you think you might be interested in, I, then I can have some, some modifications for, for the older grades if you were, were to want to come. Yeah, that's not a problem. Absolutely. We're here to help, and if and if there is a if you feel like there's a good need for just having a STEM and STEAM conference devoted just to nine through twelve, we could make that happen. So, I could we could work it out and get it planned and get it ready and make it happen. So, just email me, and I can talk to you all about that. I'll be happy to do that. Are there any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Mm hmm. Great question. So with the virtual camp, what I do is I send out emails to let you know that we're having a virtual camp. Um, and so I have kind of a started a large list of teachers who have either come or, or expressed interest in the past. And I send out an email with a Zoom invitation. And so it's all on Zoom and you get the Zoom link. And once you have the Zoom link, it's the same every time. Um, and you could just join in. But I try to send an email out um, prior to let you know that we're doing that. So if that's something that you would like, uh, if you'd like to be added in on that email list when I send those out, just send me an email and say, hey, I'd like to know about your next virtual workshop or whatever, and I'll be happy to put you on that list and email you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? All right, so um, another thing that I would like to talk to you about for just a minute, so these are just some of the cool things that we get to do. I'd really like to know what your needs are for your school. Whether And when I say this, I'm, I'm either saying your needs for you specifically for your classroom on any area of STEM, science, technology, engineering, or math, um, or that you feel like you need for your school or for your district. Um, and this is just a little, it's, it's really simple. Just scan the QR code and you could tell me, you know, drop your name and your email address and, and let me know what you would like to see offered or what you feel like the needs are for your school or your district or just your classroom. It doesn't have to be for everybody. And uh, that helps me when I'm thinking about how to plan for future events and future activities. I'd love to hear from you all. Um, and so if you would like to scan that and let me know what you feel like your needs are, I would be glad to talk with you and, get in and, and start planning some things that would help you help meet your needs. So before we go, um, also you have a little um, note card on your desk. And if you don't mind to put your name and uh, your email, if you want, if you, did, if you didn't fill out one of these, um, and the grades that you teach, um, I'm going to take it up, and then we're going to draw for three prizes because I have, I have three things today that I would like to give away. And of course, if you have any questions, you can just let me know what those are. Let's see. I am going to dump my bag, and we're going to use the, my bag as the thing to hold all of our cards, and then we'll draw. So I'm just going to come around, and if you'll drop that in there, we're going to draw. Just your name is fine. Your email if you want. Was your, did, did we get yours? Okay, awesome. All right. So I have three gifts, and we'll just draw for them randomly. 
So would you like to come up and draw the first name out for me, please? Blindly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, we'll draw three names total, and the first one can pick whichever one they want and so on and so forth. Debbie Moore. Come up. So we have three, we have three things here. We have um, a lot up terrarium kit. We have STEM challenge cards. And it says, if you look on here, it'll say grades two through five, but this can even be modified all the way up to high school. I've had high schools modify these and love them. And then we also have this. It's a chemistry set. And um, it is happy atoms. So you can have students um, put um, molecules together and learn all about atoms and molecules and, and things. So I'll let y'all um, pick a gift. So Miss Debbie, whatever one you want. <laughs> all right, Miss Debbie, before you leave, let's, let's, let's shake the bag. All right. Um, Shelby. Is this rigged or what? Oh, no. Eh. Whichever one you want, Miss Shelby. All right. And you've already drawn, so now what we're going to do is we'll let Miss Pam draw for the next one. You got your own name. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay, Miss Pam, come up. <laughs> cheater, cheater. No. No. That's awesome. All right. You're so welcome. Um, if you have questions and if you would like to talk to me more about what your needs are or what you would like to see, please email me, text me, give me a call. If I don't answer back right away, I will get to you, I promise. Um, I am in the depths of Hades with the last chapter of my dissertation and everybody's tired of hearing about it at my house so I'm going to try to finish it up <laughs> and be done. So um, thank you all so much for coming. I was glad, I'm glad to meet you all. Um, just get in touch with me if you have any questions, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for stopping by today.